Hello and welcome to the Booktopia podcast. I'm Shana Lisa Prasad, Lifestyle Books Category Manager, and I am so thrilled today to welcome um, the amazing Annabelle Crabb and Lee Sales uh, to talk about their book, Well Hello, uh, inspired and informed by their highly successful and very professional podcast, Chat 10 <laughs> <laughs> 3. Welcome. That is a very kind lie. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I, to be honest, when I Googled, um, you know, uh, Chat 10 looks three just randomly. The first thing that comes up is calling it a peripiatic. I'm definitely saying that wrong. Uh, our podcast, like that is literally the Google definition, which I think is uh, what you've said in your book that you like your podcast to be called. And then I had to Google what that meant. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, excellent, excellent research work already. Um, firstly, I want to ask you guys you've had this podcast for so long, you've got this incredible, successful Facebook group, the Chatters. Why did you decide to turn the podcast into a book? Why a book and why now? I think because um, we, we'd been talking for a while about, you know, could, would we do a book together? Would we do a chat 10 book? Various publishers had approached us over the years and we just always were too busy and had too much on. And then we hit a point where we'd been doing the podcast for about six years at the time and now about seven years. And we just thought, you know what, we've actually probably got enough material. We've got enough sense of our audience and we've got a few ideas about additional things we could talk about and write about. Um, and because of, lockdown we were traveling less than we normally are so we were kind of around we have our friend Miranda Murphy who's our co-author of the book who writes the chat 10 newsletter who's a fantastic writer in her own right um, and she also of course was kind of trapped at home because of lockdowns and so we thought look if we're ever going to do this thing this is actually now the perfect time that we could probably juggle it and make it work and um and so we did that sounds like a pretty good reason and I'm really happy that you did because uh, like I was saying just before we started, um, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed the book. Um, I will admit that I am not a every episode listener or, uh, or a, a chatter myself just because I do not have Facebook, but <laughs> I could not put down this book. It was, it was absolutely amazing. Um, okay. it was, to hear the two of you together, I could imagine uh, what the podcast was and then I went back and listened. Then it made me go back and now I've started. <laughs> listening to all of I've listened to like 10 of your podcast episodes already after starting the book oh so, that's so um, funny I really oh. want to say that because I want people to know that everyone should get this book it shouldn't just be um people that are already fans of yours uh from the podcast so that's um, a very fair conclusion thank you <laughs> is that what you were hoping that you would be able to reach um new audiences as well or were you really making this for like your your core audience your um the, your, Chats and the people that are listening. You may be assuming that there's more strategy involved than there actually is. I can, that has been the hallmark of the podcast from day one. Really, it's just sort of taken on a little life of its own, you know, and we didn't have any particularly vaulting ambitions for the podcast when it started. Um, it was just a fun thing to do and still is. Um, but this kind of community that's grown around it and that, you know, sort of exists most independently from us, really, um, of these amazing, smart, kind people who like to hang out and talk about books and stuff. Um, that sort of happened um, a bit organically. And the reason we did the book, as sales said, is that we were, we found that we could, you know, um, harness some time. And it will be what it is, I guess. Um, there will be people in the chatter community who love it because it all kind of reminded them of some funny movements in the podcast and so on but I imagine it'll be uh an interesting <laughs> read for someone who's got no idea about what's been going on with this podcast all this time and it might be uh an interesting window into the life and brain of somebody that they normally only see on television <laughs> So, I think there's, there's lots of content in it, I think, that people would be interested in beyond uh, fans of the podcast. Because, for example, we talk about um, writing and, and our, our, you know, ways that we write and what we consider to be a good piece of writing. We talk about reading and our reading lives. We talk about the art of what we think makes a good interview, a good conversation. Um, so I think there's lots of content, hopefully, that people would find interesting. Yes, I certainly uh, tried to get through a lot of the bits about interviewing and what makes a good and bad interview before this, but I think I just made myself more nervous. So <laughs> <laughs> maybe I should have waited and read that, one, right. read that one later. Um, speaking of the fact that, yes, as you said, the book has got um, this amazing mix of content 
and uh, and the and, and just so much uh, you know from writing uh, about um, why you love or don't love fairy wrens to <laughs> to uh, you know recipes and fixing said recipes. Um, how did you how did you approach actually putting together what goes into the book? Like, you, did you just have um, ideas beforehand of I want chapters on these sorts of things and then find content or how did you come up with the well that was really Miranda Murphy did a lot of the heavy lifting on that so we we had a uh, a night where we got together with Miranda and our friend Gwen Blake who did the design for the book with her company Boxer and Co and who does all of Chat 10's merch and we sort of just sat around my kitchen table and we brainstormed what what are the kind of things that you know you guys would like to read us writing or talking about one of the kind of things we would like to talk about and write about and then we sort of at that night we kind of loosely could see well there's about eight maybe kind of subject areas here and then Murph went away and we had all of the back catalogue of the podcast transcribed and so Murph um, very painstakingly went through and then found like well that could work there and this could work here and could I get you guys to expand on this topic and why don't you do that this for me and sales can you write this and crab can you write that and so she kind of designed the structure for it um, and then we sort of I guess filled in the blanks around that so that that was the kind of way that it that it worked and then there were bits where you know I wanted to write an essay about music and why I talk about music a lot on the podcast and why it's important to me and so then I suggested well if I'm writing one about music then let's get crab to write one about cooking and so you know it was a lot of that kind of stuff and sales was very enthusiastic about writing lists of top 10 things <laughs> because that's the way her brain works and she of course did them all super quickly and then I had to hand mine in late because I'm not very good at ranking things like that anyway it was um yeah there's there's kind of like a little collection of bits and bobs and um there are bits where you could immerse yourself have a bath and you know really spend a bit of time and there's some bits that you could just you know read for five minutes before you go to bed or whatever so i think it's like a little a little mixed plate of insight and idiot jokes basically <laughs> What a great description. <laughs> and um, you, uh, I've heard you talking a little bit about the book already and you've said that you actually enjoyed writing this book, where Annabelle, I feel that you've previously made quite clear <laughs> your uh, not love, shall we say, of, of, of uh, the uh, writing process <laughs> of books you've written before. And books are hard, you know, and he, he, when you're writing them on your own, you feel like you're climbing this sort of lonely mountain and by the time you get to the top, you kind of look back and you hate everything that you've written and you hate yourself. And <laughs> I find it really, whenever I agree to write a book, I think, oh God, because I know that there's just going to be these sort of terrible like points along the way. Whereas this one was actually um, a pleasure because um, it was a bit of a joint effort. And the spine of the book is sort of these conversations that I enjoy having with my friends. So, you know, that is kind of like winning the lottery in terms of writing a book. And I think it's true of the podcast as well, that even though creating media content is what we, Lee and I do as a job. And so I guess, you know, you could look at the podcast and think, well, it's just an extension of your day job, but it isn't for me at all. It feels like, um, actually a restorative activity. I find that recording the podcast doesn't cost me energy. It kind of replenishes my energy. And that's why I think we, we still do it, even though often we um, have pretty overloaded and busy weeks. I think both of us find getting together and talking about books and writing and cooking and music together is, um, is actually um, a kind of a, a replenishing exercise. Absolutely, um, and it really comes. It really comes through, uh, particularly I think in the uh, two pages, which is full of insults that um, <laughs> you guys have uh, have lovingly uh, given to each other over the over the years. Um, I, I love how you've given some in in the in the chapters. There's um, key people in your in your um, uh, podcast team that you've given uh, space to. Um, we talked about the, one of them already, which is Gwen. Um, can you talk a little bit more about the look of this book? Because it is so unique and it is so wonderful. And it gives me the question of, is 70s the best decade? Because that is, <laughs> that is what, we're, <laughs> what we can see from the design, that it's like that incredible end paper, um, which hopefully everyone has now seen all over your Instagram and your, your Facebook. Um, yeah, how did, how did we get to the book looking the way it does? 
just because Gwen has got such amazing taste and because she knows us and the podcast really well, she's designed a look around it that I think really captures the tone of, of what we do. So Gwen runs co-owns a packaging design business called boxer and co and i think she's she's incredibly organized and incredibly bright and she early on said to us listen should i do some work maybe designing you know making your website look a bit schmicker (laughs) and we were like oh yeah sure okay if you want to and then it became could I, should I commission some tea towels that maybe you guys could sell as merchandise that could help meet some of your costs and so forth? And so this sort of started this ball rolling. And because she's so smart at identifying, you know, what people might like and, and, and as I said, designing the look of, of what we do, um, I feel like it's one of my favourite things actually about the whole this whole crazy world of the podcast that's evolved has been the work that Gwen's done to sort of put a visual image with it and so when we were doing the book we said to penguin the publisher um you know yes we're interested in doing this with you but it has to involve gwen blake and and gwen blake's kind of property because that is so the look of chat 10 looks three and she gets better than anyone how to visualize what we're talking about so um it was gwen's idea to have a person do embroidery to get that kind of embroidered look that's on the cover uh and then just the design and the colors and then the layout that follows through penguin obviously did lots of that too but it's kind of you know gwen's vision for how the the pod looks yeah but, um the idea of embroidered chapter titles and covers is just like the most fabulously elaborate i, I want you know um i want amy to um who's the our embroiderer amy jones i want her to embroider everything in my life yeah. <laughs> i want everything to be now embroidered but um you know we're obviously working on that um but yeah it's just a really original kind of idea i think it's already won at least one design award um and it's part of i think gwen's deep understanding of not just um design but also what the podcast is all about and what the podcast community is all about and so when Gwen designs um merchandise and you would not believe the sort of stuff that she's come up with that goes absolutely off with the chatters like you know like she's designed a um doormat that says well hello and it's absolutely marching out the door but she's always looking for ways to find um small business people like the one who's providing the doormats most of the merchandise um a proportion of sales goes to an appropriate charity um like the cross stitch kit that uh, gwen's just uh, designed which is shortly to be sent out which um contributes a proportion of sales to um a charity su- supporting uh, vision impairment people who can't do cross stitch so like that sort of um that sort of sense of kindness and thoughtfulness is really through everything that we do and that's because not because either of us is a particularly kind and thoughtful person it's just like that is the community that's sort of grown up and that's what the facebook group is really about too which also runs on sort of generosity and tolerance and um and that's a great thing to be a part of i mean i feel like the podcast is a part of that but actually it's about a community that's much bigger than just the podcast we just it feels like we've given them a bit of a rallying rallying point together yeah and you've done a really um great job uh really bringing that sense of community that the the um the podcast um that the facebook group has into the book as well um can you tell us a little bit about some of your favorite um i don't know favorite i know it's hard to pick a favorite if, if you didn't love it it wouldn't be in the book but <laughs> just some of the uh the people that you've you've mentioned in the book um one of the, one of the one of the people that i find you know there's so many interesting people in that group and we've met so many great people over the years um One of them who I find particularly amazing is a woman called Kate Pritchett, who has become a sort of, I guess, minor celebrity in that chat 10 world. And she's a woman who by day her job is she's a senior um, figure in the New South Wales Health Department, but she has the most, she is the most extraordinary cook of Asian cuisine and her knowledge of Asian cuisine is just from, from all lots of countries is 
absolutely incredible. And she's, while she doesn't eat cake herself, she's the most extraordinary baker of these structurally elaborate cakes that the flavours of them are amazing. Um, I've eaten a couple of things that she's made and they have just blown my mind at the balance between all of, you know, the flavours, but also texturally. And she's just incredible. And I think that, I mean, I would love to see her write a book because I think there would be an immediate market of 40,000 people in the Chat 10 Facebook group who would want it. Um, Because I also find her philosophy about life kind of interesting. Like she's a very tolerant, accepting person and who really cares very little about what other people think of her and her eclectic interests, but she's very kind-hearted and and generous as well. And I just find her, um, she's really expert in Japanese culture. She's an amazing um, person and I just, I I can't get enough of her basically. And so, uh, yeah, she's certainly for me, one of my absolute favourites that the book has sort of made me aware of. Uh, Not the book, the um, Chat 10 podcast. We could probably do, you know, a five book series on yeah. amazing yeah. people who are in that group and and things that people have done for each other in that group. And I feel always just incredibly moved when I'm in that group and I can see all of these interactions. I mean, Sales and I don't actually do Facebook. That's the only page that we ever go to in Facebook because yeah. um, I find Facebook too overwhelming most of the time. But just to feel that there is this sort of vibrant community there and all of whom want desperately to be in touch with each other is just a really beautiful thing and you know this the book is full of some uh, some of the well just a selection of some of the extraordinary um things that that group has achieved as a you know as a collection of people i mean um just even as uh, amateur detectives they're kind of amazing like the story of uncle ian who <laughs> <laughs> that was great <laughs> A chatter found a T-shirt in an op shop in, we think it was Fiji, can't remember, um, and on holiday and was just laughing because it was a picture of a man and it said, the T-shirt said, I am Uncle Ian and I am deeply loved. <laughs> the chatter was sort of hilarious that Uncle Ian was so deeply loved that he's bunged the shirt into the charity bin. Um, and so she just posts it and says, ah, wonder who this guy is seriously within hours he's been tracked down he's been contacted he's in absolute fits of laughter the the t-shirt is ceremoniously returned to him and anyway he's like a minor deity in the in the (laughs) facebook group now but there's heaps of examples um mainly of people just putting in a bit of effort to fix something that's gone wrong in somebody else's life you know we had this um lady whose daughter lost her little stuffed flamingo whose name was Gilda remember that one Kate my daughter here is just (laughs) and so and the daughter was absolutely heartbroken and the mum posted in the group about it and all of a sudden because it was one of those beanie boo toys that you know are around the place and almost everybody had one of these things and so everyone started photographing Gilda in various locations here's Gilda having you know a holiday in Uluru and here's Gilda in you know Santa Monica like in all of these chatters around the world were kind of sending holiday pics from Gilda the Flamingo and then the great Kate Pritchett um, who Sales just mentioned made a Gilda cake you know and hooned it round to their place so yeah she did didn't she remember that picture yeah so I mean just sort of look there's a danger in sort of, you know, assuming that you can build a world where everything is lovely and nothing bad ever happens, of course, you know, and yeah. that's not what that group is like. It's just sort of, and it, it's not all things to all people either, but in a sense, it's just a little break from how kind of shouty other areas of social media can be. It's not trying to be everything in the world. It's just a place where you can go and have a bit of a natter about books and cooking and say something funny that happened to you and, you know, um, then leave feeling a little bit refreshed. That's all it is. But it's a really great thing to have, particularly in the couple of years that we've just had. Definitely. That is absolutely for sure. Um, uh, One of my uh, other uh, great, I think the great favourite parts of the book was reading about... um, Kenny's uh, family Christmas Day organizational chart. Yeah. Um, that was that was I don't know why, but it just cracked me up so much. Just opening this chart and just imagining the family getting 
uh, so one of their, you know, one of their family members telling them this is the things you'll be responsible for. That was just um, on Christmas Day. Classic. Particularly <laughs> the degree of detail that it went down oh. into. Like, you know, if there was a any sort of accidental fire that one of <laughs> sons was responsible for grabbing the fire hydrant and, you know, someone else had some pool-related duties. And, yeah, that was absolutely hilarious. And that's become a thing that, like, every year everyone looks quite forward to seeing the Kenny family spreadsheet for that year. And then Paul Kenny. No, it was Brett Kenny, wasn't it, who was the originator of the list. Brett Kenny makes the list. Brett Kenny, um, who had never heard of, you know, the group, his sister was in it. Uh, yeah, they ended up, the Kennys kind of became like the first family. <laughs> and so Brett Kenny, you know, like there's these, it just makes me laugh so hard, the kind of unwitting celebrities that the group's thrown up, Brett Kenny being one. The other poor person that's been... Got, got this, you know, level of celebrity unasked for is my former producer at 7.30, Callum Dines, who one day oh. happened to walk in, barge in on us when we were recording a podcast in my green room at the ABC. And uh, so we just said, we invited him to say something and he said something like, you know, hi, my name's Callum and I'm single and, you know, something <laughs> like this. And Callum, when he, when he left, Cra Crab referred to it. He's a very nice looking um, man, Callum, and Crab referred to him as hot Callum. And then oh, so he came, he, became, he got like this sort of group of, of devotees and <laughs> the poor guy's dating life became, you know, he'd meet people and they'd be like, hang on are you hot Callum when he would when they get to the bottom of what he did and in fact just yesterday I posted some content about him because he's got a section in the book on social media and I kept screenshotting him direct messages that were coming into me which was all like is Callum still single um you know and you know is Callum I met Callum on tinder and then I told him that you know I knew that he was hot Callum but it's just like poor Callum um I just yeah I feel I feel quite sorry for him really that he got wrote <laughs> extravaganza Oh, that's 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 wonderful. Um, it, it did say in the book that he had a boyfriend, though, right? So, do you know what? He's, he is actually nearly single. Oh. So, if anyone is listening to this, and oh, okay, you know, don't don't listen to the book. It's already out of date. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie, Eddie, charming young uh, gay men who have great senses of humour and are very smart and um, find me amusing. You probably get on quite well with Cal. <laughs> <laughs> well, what a wonderful to, uh, place to leave to leave this, um, <laughs> this discussion <laughs> with a dating uh, call out, Callum. Uh, Spruiking <laughs> dating services for your community. community is a good dating community for Callum, right? Like he's an author too, so I mean, yeah, no. But the, prob the problem is. We only have our listenership's about 10% men. And then when you rule yeah. out the kind of cardigan wearing dags, because he's quite cool, he's got like maybe a 0.001% chance of meeting somebody in the chat 10 group. Like he's really, he's become a cult figure in the exact wrong group. Yeah. Well, um, I, I'm, I'm not sure if there's in our Booktopia office whether there are any. We've got a lot of hot gay men, but I don't know if, I think most of them are already taken, unfortunately. Um, but we are employing people all the time, so you never know. So we well, should just keep Callum in mind. Let me know. Get in touch. We're finally yeah. out of lockdown, you never know. Could never know what could happen. You live to serve with this podcast. In fact, we live to serve. One, <laughs> one of, one of um, uh, our, um, uh, our content and brand manager, he'll hate me saying this, but I'm going to say it anyway, Mark. He, he was, um, uh, we call him Kmart hot. Because in, in, a, in, a, in a live event that he hosted, one of the women uh, chatted something about, how, about Kmart and about how attractive he was. And so he's now, even on his birthday cards, we just say, you know, happy birthday, Kmart hot. Um, oh, that's classic. <laughs> that's funny. And it's like, what a, I don't think she meant it as a put down, but um, that's what we do. So, yeah. <laughs> that's, it, it's, sort it reminds like, it's sort of like what the, this whole podcast is about. Stupid jokes that have somehow <laughs> caught on and no one can remember why. And they just don't really stand up to scrutiny. But yet people just still fall around laughing when they think about it. It's kind of, it's like what you have with friends, you know, just dumb jokes that kind yep, of. Exactly. Settling. And that is that is what you have done with this book. You have made you have made me feel like I know you, even though I obviously do not. And we've just met today, um, and I think that that's what you'll be doing for um, all the people that will be lucky enough to uh, be getting a copy of this for Christmas. Because like this to me is like exactly what anyone is going to be like. Oh, I've got you know someone in my family, and they they're really funny, but I don't really know exactly what they like. Blah 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 blah. And this is the book. Well, hello. That is what we are banking on for our retirement plan. So that is good news. That is music to my ears. <laughs>
Well, thank you both so much for taking the time out of your extremely busy schedules to, no. um, to talk to us about the book and we wish you all success with it. And um, for everyone listening, you can buy this book right now at booktopia.com.au. And when you're out of lockdown, you could probably also go to a real in-person bookstore and buy it from there as well. <laughs> <laughs> all avenues to buy books, I say. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Chanu. Thanks so much. Thank you for listening to the Booktopia podcast channel. Don't forget, you can subscribe to us on SoundCloud and iTunes for free and get access to hundreds of author discussions, book analysis pieces and more. Or if your eyes need a workout, head to Booktopia TV on YouTube. Don't forget, for all books featured in this podcast and for access to a whole bunch of other fun content on our blog, head to Booktopia. Australia's local bookstore at booktopia.com.au.